a question. Who came up with the saying, money can't buy you happiness? I want to talk to them. I want to talk to them right now because I can name like five things money can buy me right now that'll get me to the point of happiness. This week on Textually Active, we're talking about all the things money and how money could actually make us pretty happy. Make sure you guys tune in right now on Textually Active. Welcome back to a new episode of Textually Active. Textually Active. This is your weekly dose of conversations about navigating the digital age while dealing with friendships, relationships, and all the ships in between. I'm Rez, and I got Meezy here with me. I'm here. And EA is on the boards. Yeah. Meezy, you ain't, you ain't say gang shit like you normally do. Or. It ain't gang shit this week. Uh huh. It's a lot of self reflection. Little illness, like just in a headspace where you know you start thinking about shit. Right. Don't be feeling well. Like you feel like you're getting older. Fucking feet hurt more often now. I think I got plantar fasciitis. Fucking. Where'd you learn that word? Stay off of WebMD. Tim Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> it was Tim Duncan. Like every time you see Tim Duncan wasn't playing, he had plantar fasciitis. Okay. But it's fucking wake up, get out the bed, limping and shit. Fucking dental, fucking medical, all this shit. You start thinking about like uh, adulthood. Bullshit. It, That's what it is. It's 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 a lot that goes into it. And when you have those moments and you thinking about it, you just gotta digest all of it in the moment. People who are around you, right? What they want you for, right? What they want to use you for, Absolutely. why you still around, all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. What would be better if you had? Certain resources that you don't have. Right. Um, but we'll get into it. We'll get into it. E, how you doing? I'm all right. Um Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like I'm just piggybacking off of what what means you said. Yeah. In terms that need to be ended in twenty twenty one. But um yeah, it's just it, just trying to check out the vibe. That's it. Just a vibe check. Yeah. See what everybody on. Yeah. That don't it. hurt. You gotta see what's going on, what people what people really want, how people handle you. Uh, I know that this was probably one of the words that you guys feel like are overused, but like, you really got to check the vibes. You got to see what the energy is. Vibes is short for vibration. How are you vibrating today? Are you vibrating high? Or are you vibrating in the middle? Or are you vibrating low? Like, what's the vibes? Oh, uh, so the other week I was watching Versus mm-hmm. and I heard D Nice say he was playing Shaka Khan and he stopped the music and he said, no, these are the vibes. And I was trying to figure out what that meant. Like, yeah, like how, it, like what, like the the music makes you feel good. Now, I've, now I figured out what vibes was. Yeah, you could feel it. Like you could hit, you could feel like I could understand how you're vibing right now. Like your vibration is mellow. You're not like gang shit only. You like eh, whatever. You hit a pod, but you ain't hit a pod. pod. You're, no, he's here to pod. He's here to pod. Um, I got my pod hat on. I, I feel like I'm in the same space as you. Just like. A lot of reflection. We're into a new month. Uh, the the months seem to be flying by. Things are starting to slowly get back. But then you still, ha- I still have like that feeling of is COVID nineteen over? Are we getting back into the swing of things? And if we are getting back into the swing of things, how? Where do I fit in? Because I still don't want to go out to eat with a hundred percent capacity. Like I'm cool off that. Like. What the vibes are, so. COVID was a real ass killer. This yeah. nigga been killing for two years. Mm. On a run. Two years or one? On a run. Uh, two years. I mean, yeah, I mean. Nigga, COVID. I mean, it's nigga, 2021. Until, uh, until it's gone. <laughs> the nigga still killing. Yeah. Until it's gone. Shit. He, I mean, it's not happening at the rate that it was before, but he's still, he's still here. Right. Oh, no, they're still here. So with the mood that we're in and the vibe checks and everything, I just wanted to talk about something because- You know, it's something that we all kind of look forward to. I was on the Internet a couple of weeks ago um, listening to the news and stuff, and it looks like uh, Moneybag Joe is maybe pushing for another stimulus. He may be pushing for, like, more money for people who are on unemployment and just more benefits. He's talking about taking uh, student loan debt away up to $50,000 and all of these things. And it kind of got me thinking about money, 
and the role that money plays in our lives. Because if you're on the internet, you'll see some people arguing against the things that Joe wanted to do with the $15 uh, per hour minimum wage with giving people monthly stimulus checks or giving people the opportunity to get more um, unemployment benefits for longer. And it's kind of like, why y'all mad about that? Like, we all can't get a bag. We all can't get some money the way that we need it. Or like, do you have this idea about people and their relationship with money? So I kind of wanted to sit down and have a conversation with you all about the impact of money, specifically around our culture and people in this generation. So what do you think? I think it's some bullshit. (laughs) Which part? All of it. Niggas say Obama didn't finish paying his student loans off till he was president. Sheesh. Imagine getting your direct deposit from the government. And you look at your, you look at it, and they took money out, and they put you on hold when you call Sally Mae, right? And you the president, fam. <laughs> like, look at this system that we live in, bro. The, Bar- Barack Obama, the head of this country, is put on hold when he calls Sally Mae. He can't even talk. He don't even get the direct supervisor number. They give him the hotline. So I just feel like it don't matter who you are, what you is, bro. Rich, black, white, they don't give a f- about you. And it's either you find a way to get yours and get out the way, or you just ain't going to never have nothing. You're going to be poor and trying to figure out how you can get it and hope one day fucking oil strikes. Somebody die and give you an inheritance or something. Lotto, hit the lotto one time. It's just, it's hard. This shit is hard. It is challenging. I think we've been groomed as a society to think, you know, if you work every day, you'll get a payout or every time you put in some type of effort, you'll get a payout. And maybe just maybe if I put in 40 hours a week, I'll be able to pay my bills and have a little bit of money extra to do something in my spare time. But we never take into consideration that time is more valuable than money. Because if I'm spending um, a majority of my time at work, where does that leave me to come up with creative ideas to be a creator or to come up with things to feed my mind and my body so that I am happy and I am in a space to be a productive member of society? Um, If I'm spending most of my time at work, where does everybody where does everything else fall? And it's all simply so that we can get that money to live the lifestyle that. Gives us free time. Yeah, but like, I've been working in a grocery store for the last six months. Yeah. I've been finding myself jealous of the people that come in there using food stamps. Really? <laughs> like, I like I just, like, these niggas are in here with their food stamps, which I find to be absolutely all right, using their food stamps to buy steaks, all the crab legs be gone, the scallops. You know, all of filet. And I just be sitting here, I'm like, I'm jealous by this. Because it feels like this ain't like a, like a, it's, it's, it feel like they winning versus what it probably, the way it's, when you read about it in the guidelines of it is. Like, bro, how am I missing out on this? I don't think it is a winning thing. Because in order for you to get those benefits, and it's it's so sad, but this is something that I've experienced um just with my friends who were receiving like state benefits or um, like financial support from the government is that you're held there. Like if your job was to offer you a raise today and bring your pay up from nine seventy five to twelve dollars, you will lose those food stamp benefits, the housing benefits. And it's not taken into consideration yeah. that. $12 an hour isn't enough for me to support my house. So it's almost like that system is put in place to keep you exactly where you are. And yeah, food stamps may seem like it's a benefit, but you're never going to get above that place if you continue to be in that system. Like they don't give you enough for you to be taking trips to Bermuda every year or for you to be able to say, I'm off for uh <laughs> two weeks and vacationing with my family at the beach. I would like to talk on another podcast. I'd like to talk about <laughs> where no and what the fuck is Bermuda? 
Like, how often do you hear my first say, well, we just came back from... I don't make enough money to know. Like, I do not make enough money like, to know. We've always been afraid of the Bermuda Triangle, but I just don't... I, it's not common to hear people say I was in Bermuda last month. Honey, somebody, somebody told me they was going to the Galapagos Islands. Do you know what the fuck a Galapagos Island is? Sound like more than I make? <laughs> Galapagos. A Galapagos? Galapagos. Like, don't that sound like... That was Casper's like, other brother. Where is Galapagos at? Where, Like, let's start there. Where is Galapagos? <laughs> so it got me, like, Googling and all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, Galapagos is off the coast of Ecuador, uh, near South America, like, somewhere that, uh, if I could tell you to live on the path that I'm living, might not be able to go there. Valid. But it's just, like, a level of luxury that Man. you get... Galapagos Islands is not Waikiki. Like it's not it's not the same. Like it's more of an exotic type of place. Like you it's probably I mean, yeah, there's probably resorts there, but it's a little bit more dangerous. You probably get Bit by a snake. Bit by a snake or a Komodo dragon before you like anything else. Yeah. So I I mean It's not a place to go? I mean, if you were into that, if that's if you're into those type of safaris and stuff. Yeah. The point is I'm not gonna be able to go there if I wanted I mean, to. I mean, but every vacation isn't like about it's about experience for me. Like we go on a vacation, we want to afford enough, have enough money to afford these experiences, uh, and make enough money so that we can get these experiences and have something to say. Yo, I almost got killed by a Komodo dragon. Do you know what a Komodo dragon is? And just have that experience and know that. Everything is bigger than the city that you grew up. Do you remember the first time you left your hometown and what that felt like? Wasn't that long ago. But how did it feel? It was like, oh, we went somewhere new. Like, oh, I have, I've only seen this on the internet. Not <laughs> even that, but like, not like to a different country or a different um, tropical location, but just like going from Winston to a different state. Every time I go to Charlotte, I'm still amazed. <laughs> Every time I go to Greensboro and do something different I ain't never done in Greensboro before, I'd be amazed. Right. Like, oh, I, this has been here 45 minutes. I just came back from Raleigh, bro. Like, this is only an hour away. I could do this all the time. Like, it just don't feel like it because the money ain't there. Like, nigga, I, I'm going to go eat at McDonald's and come back home. Like, you know what I'm saying? The money not there to enjoy shit like that. So it always feel like you missing out on life because, like, number one, the potential is never showed. Like, the possibilities of life ain't showed to you. Because it's always your upbringing is brought to you, is shown to you through a window of somebody who might have either experienced a lot or didn't experience a lot. So if your window wasn't as broad, it was just being from North Carolina, Myrtle Beach, maybe Atlanta, Charlotte. It's like, oh, these are the places that I should go. But if you grew up with somebody who traveled the fucking world, California don't seem that far. New York is only, what, four-hour flight or max? Like, <laughs> two. Two, max. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, like you can do this if you ex- have been around people who experienced it so i always so it's, it's like experience it's one of those yeah experience but if you don't know experience if you don't have money to know experience then you, you can't teach experience yeah let's sit in that for a minute if you don't have money to know experience or you weren't raised by somebody who has money to show you what an experience is like imagine the things that you do Watching other people experience the things that you want to do. Envy. Which. So, j- jealousy. Right. So our experience is only like, I guess I, I just want to, I just want to paint. I don't want to just say experience is like, you have to have like a ton of money. Right. Because you said you like go on the Raleigh, right. It was an hour drive. Right. But I understand like to do certain things that you might want to get into, like you got to have extra income. So I, can we just talk about like, like, are we just talking about in general, or are we talking about like to go to the Galapagos Islands? We talking about in general, bro. I'm talking about nigga. I've like this is wild, but like for a long time, the biggest amusement part I've ever went to was the city fair. Like as a kid, maybe Carowinds. We went to Carowinds. 
That's a lie. Let me. I, I lied. I went to Disney when I was three. That's not an experience that I remember. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're young. You're too young to remember. I don't remember what this experience is about. So I also, as a 30 year old adult, don't see the need to go to Disney. Like, but if I decided to have kids and Disney is this place that they want to go, why? Because of my selfish reasons, number one, just selfish reasons, but two, ability to afford it. Like, why should I deprive my kids of their experience because of mine? So I feel like when, like, everything I knew about life from 16 up, because everything else was just really local, really local. Like, the furthest I ever went from before an adult, Virginia, Atlanta, Florida when I went to Disney. But, like, those three, I don't remember. And these ain't like we drove in a car. These are like bus trips. Like the church was taking people and you ride the bus with the church and you go to that. Like I don't understand. I don't know the concept. I I didn't I just went on my first vacation, like as an adult last last month, like two months ago. Like I don't know what it's like to stay in a hotel that's like really nice and live that kind of like I don't know. It's just regular, like I never had those experiences growing up. So yeah. like, now like Understand how much it costs. It kind of makes sense. Right. <laughs> like how it much it costs. Yeah. Well, then when you look at it from that point, because I, I mean, on the opposite end, I was able to go on vacations at least once a year just to do something and just get those experiences. But then on the flip side, as an adult, realizing, like you said, how much it does cost to do those things. Yeah. I know that it's nice to go these places, but now I also know the amount of work that you have to put in to get there. Mm -hmm. And I still understand the things that people will do um, to get to those places and be able to live a certain life of luxury or get a, get a certain type of um, experience, you know, that you wouldn't typically be able to get if, if you're not making any money. So then it plays into the point that people always love to push on us is that money is the root of all evil. And as somebody who doesn't have like a lot of money just laying around, you know, doing everything, just tripling or making money in your sleep or whatever, you know, the making rich folks your money say, work for you. making your money work for you. For all of us who don't have that, that that statement is kind of sensitive, insensitive. It's kind of like, eh. It seems pretty peaceful over there, but you got to think that you're thinking about it from the view of people who actually had to do the things that they tell us you need to do in order or that the things that some people are willing to do to get money. So when you start thinking about like people who don't have access, like they think, OK, well, I don't have money now, but if I go to school, go to college maybe play a sport, I may be able to get picked up by the NBA and make money. Or, hey, Soldier Boy, you know, he got pretty famous on YouTube from making a song um, and jumping out there and being an artist. Or what's a uh, homegirl, Catch Me Outside, you know, she turned 18, she made OnlyFans, and she made a million dollars in a day. Listen. Or even closer to millennials, oh, Kim K, she had a sex tape, now she's with a billionaire. Like, you think of those things that you see, and it's like, eh, it is kind of. All of those things, minus the basketball one, because I can't hoop, I'd be willing to do. Mm -hmm. All of it. Yep. Every single one of them. So, if I was raised, if I wasn't raised right, I'd, I'd sell drugs right now. Oh, really? If I didn't understand the consequences, like all the shit that came with it, oh, in a heartbeat. Mm. In a heartbeat. What do you have here? I mean, so what is the difference? Is it because those options seem easier? They don't. Than, I mean, because if you think about it, like, yeah, you might not. I mean, the same way that most of those people, like, you're, you're introduced to them. Like, you don't know them directly. You introduce them through through media, right? Yeah. And it's not to say that there aren't people like it was just no you're just basically saying like there was no one out there making being a doctor sexy enough or being a lawyer sexy enough because it doesn't didn't come off easy valid yeah no well, i mean it ain't even about coming off easy like the the reward is way higher than the risk 
Like, is it? Okay, I got naked on the internet. I don't have to worry about if I botch this girl's surgery and she die on my table. That's fair. <laughs> so, that's I don't. Actually, that that was a pretty drastic point, but I get it. I don't have like yes. I made a song on the internet about booty cheeks, and you laughed, and you oh, and you thought it was hilarious, but it streamed a billion times. I also don't have to worry about like somebody had an overdose. <laughs> like I was like, I don't have to like worry about these things. Somebody, the reason they on pain medicine, the reason they addicted to opioids is because I prescribed it to them because I thought this is the best way to help their problem. Or somebody's doing life in jail because I didn't have the experience as a, or not even an experience, but I didn't fight their case the right way, and I, I overlooked something that could have got one them detail. Out of jail. I, like uh, I heard um, a Jeezy's guy on. Uh, the Big Facts podcast say the reason he lost his case against Jeezy was because he filed for bankruptcy. And because so because he filed for bankruptcy, that means he had to give up all ownerships to everything. He was suing Jeezy for ownership of the company that they started together. Mm. His lawyer was supposed to tell him. Right. You can't file bankruptcy. <laughs> yet. Like, like, yeah. look at how you look at what you're like. Like you put people in these predicaments versus nigga. I was my dick was out for 30 seconds on OnlyFans and somebody paid ten dollars for it. Yeah. But what, what they're not mentioning about the OnlyFans piece or about the um, going to school to be an athlete to get picked up by the NBA or the piece about um, being an artist is that. The only like a big piece of the reason why she was able to make a million dollars on OnlyFans is because she already had a following of people who wanted to see that for her. And unless you have that following, it's not going to happen the same for you. And uh, with the athlete part, you still have to do the work throughout school to be able to go to the NBA. Not even that. Let's let's just keep it a buck. It's a bunch of motherfuckers in the neighborhood who will get on an NBA court and bust somebody ass. But because they didn't get their chance. Niggas in the G League who will bust anybody ass in the G League still don't get their shot in the league. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's it it hard work don't do hard work does not mean success. Alone. Alone. Yeah. Something is out to happen for you to get your shot, get your break. And your shot may come at the expense of somebody else. I hoop really well. I made the team. The star point guard fucking blow his knee out. Now I'm in that spot. Now I've showed the world that I'm the best. I'm a good player. I'm the best player. I got my shot. Thank you to me, but I feel bad for the motherfucker who who had a shot, just lost it. Mm -hmm. Like, we love to talk about love and basketball. The part that sticks out to me the most about that movie is when she got to school and everybody thought, the starting point guard was hating on her. And all of the point guard told her, you trying to take my spot. But you got to remember, the only reason you here is because Tanya got pregnant and couldn't come. <laughs> like, like that's a very important part to this storyline. Like, she became a star later because of her hard work. But her shot was somebody got pregnant for you and couldn't come. And that's why you here. Because they were done recruiting when they got to you. You wasn't even going to be here. Mm. So it's like shit happens, but something's got to give at some point. Either it's good for you, bad for somebody else, or you know, it just popped so randomly. I just, I, so the, I, I want I want to ask you guys this because you guys would mention it earlier. Why I know you guys are just you know being funny about it, but why do people poke fun at the people who I guess are like like the I guess the the people who are like who are like oh like. Oh, money's working in their sleeve and stuff like that. Like you guys, you guys did that, but I'm curious of why. Like because why is why is that a thing? To me, it feels it feels less gener like genuine than it's supposed to be. It actually just feels like it's kind of like a humble brag. You know what I'm saying? Like I made like it always comes with this great announcement, like. And that's and I feel like that's fine. If you happy of your accomplishments and your achievements, it's not my place to look at you and be bitter about what you did or be angry about what you did. But it just seems like I seen a video the other day. Quavo gave some kids some money. 
Why did I see this? Because somebody taped it. Like. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I mean, why are you telling us that you're mo- you making money in your sleep? Like, you I know what I'm saying? So for me, I um I laugh at the statement not because it's funny, but just because you make it sound like it's so easy. We make sleep sound like it's something easy to do. Sleep is something that we do in our leisure. So for you to say your money is making tripling itself or working in your sleep is almost like it's something easy that anybody can do and we and it's taking away the work aspect of it's it. a shit on you statement mm-hmm. like nigga you not like nigga this you had to work for you I, for some reason we like putting people down who are poor you ain't making them you ain't make this nigga i made triple what you made in a day mm-hmm. like I made some money, sir. Uh, I like, made like, some money. <laughs> I, I, I made some money. It wasn't I mean, much. I mean, I mean, but yeah, no one, no one likes a dickhead, though. I mean, I, I get that, but yeah, they, I, they but, can but, be dickheads. No, but there are. I mean, this is how society is. You get the beefing with but the it, right person. They're gonna no, tell you about yourself. No, Yo, but it, broke but it, ass. <laughs> yeah, I say like we, we love it. So we, 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 we definitely like, talk about that. We're gonna bro. shit on people just because, and it's like, fam, you not. But, but then, but, but then there's a, a point in the in our community where we don't like to we don't like to to a, a acknowledge people for who are doing it the right way. Kanye we don't West, like talent. Kanye West <laughs> made a song that said, "La la la la, wait till I get my money right." And it then goes on to say how you can't tell him nothing when he gets to that point. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, it's not to say anything against the people who have worked hard because you worked hard to be able to say that. And I can't say that I won't do the same. But there is a piece of shame that comes with like, damn, you broke ass nigga. Like, it's kind of insensitive. We don't fucking care. Like, you said you were going on to say that we don't like Well, like talent, bro, like. I don't know who the richest black dude is. His name's like Robert Smith or something. I don't know what he does. Computer science. He might be a neurologist. I don't know what the fuck he does. But you know who else I know who's a billionaire for sure? Mm -hmm. Puff, Dr. Dre, Kanye, Mm Jay-Z. All musicians. It's because it's sexy. Sexy. I mean, they they did hard work. Of course, they did. Right. It's not easy to make words rhyme. It's not me- easy to hear things and make them make sense. But fam, it's sexy. That's it. I would much rather hear somebody who couldn't sing but say all the things I want to hear, as long as it sounds good. Because a motherfucker that can play piano, I ain't trying to hear these goddamn pianos. His name is Aliko Dangote, and he is the founder of Dangote Cement, Africa's largest cement producer, and he is valued at $11.5 billion. Black billionaires make up fewer than 1% of all billionaires worldwide. Um, And on that list is Tyler Perry, uh... Mike A. Dunoga, uh, Robert E. Smith. Robert Smith was the dude I was trying to, I, right. I don't know what he does. Uh, Kanye West is on that list. The software, I think. You know what I'm Michael saying? Jordan, Oprah Winfrey. Look, look at the people that are in that percentage. These are people who just got a shot. Mahabit, <laughs> Abraham, Strive, Masaiwa, Michael Lee Chin, uh, Alexander Karp. Looks like a white man. I don't know. Uh, David Stewart. Yeah. So it is a list of them. Yeah. But like you said, it's like it's it's what's sexy. Like you know what I'm saying. It ain't about what you did. It's just about what's sexy. Like like it's even when it come down to like finding somebody to be with. Like the ball players and the rappers make the money. Having money look pretty fucking fun. Balling out, <laughs> spilling champagne. I saw young black youngster throw a brick of money at a stripper. Not like make it rain. He it was still bundled. He just threw that. Looked fun. Looked amazing. <laughs> like that's what that's what looked fun, bro. Like that's what looked fun. Yeah. Like I I don't want to go to school, nigga. nigga. What I'm for? It? For not eight, nine, ten years. So how do we feel when people say money is the root of all evil? Do you think it is? 
Yes. Do you think seeing people spend throw a brick of money at somebody or people uh, answering their money phone or doing a spread <laughs> makes other people like makes it evil? Yeah. What, what part like, about it is evil? I feel like it adds the fuel to jealousy and uh, as much of a motivation thing it could be that, but I also see it in corporations like. If I have a bad mental day at work, you think they give a fuck? At the corporation? <laughs> nah. Mm-mm. But if I bring in a shitload of money that one day, guess who's employee of the month? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. they don't give a fuck. The money is all that is important to you. If you die at work, the first thing they're going to say is, was she on drugs? Was she incapacitated at work? So that this is her fault. We need to protect us. It ain't about you. It's just, it's about them. So it it roots a bunch of shit. Like, nigga, you don't get holidays off. People have families. Even in a society that should be based off Christian, like Christian practices, niggas had to go to work for Easter last right. week. Right. <laughs> like, a holiday that is built around Jesus, religion, people still had to go to work in a country that's found its thing which states most of its uh practices and morals around christianity i feel like in the people who do have money and specifically around these uh corporations and billionaires to some extent i feel like you remember when um dave Chappelle was at the roundhouse table and everybody had got their reparations and he was kind of like holding on to his money real tight. <laughs> I feel like that's how they think it is. Like, yeah. hide your money, y'all. It's poor people around kind of feel. Yeah. And it's just like, eh, we could use it. I mean, it could help, but also I understand it not being your duty. Um, so I wouldn't put the blame on the billionaires, but more so, more so the systems that are in place. Oh, absolutely. But even if you take it to a smaller, if you become the first person in your family with money, your phone's gonna probably ring a little bit more than it does. Oh now. yeah, we ain't got no money. Oh yeah, I've been having that conversation with uh, one of my relatives who is kind of like, I have to, I have to be aware. Like I'm doing things in my life that make it look like I've made it, and I'm starting to notice, which is a valid thing. I'm starting to notice that people are acting funny. So in order to protect myself, I have to put walls up. But then when people do put those walls up, it's like, oh, such such acting funny. They got money now. I have to act different right. because I have money now. I can't still be parlaying around with y'all downtown on 4th Street, drunk and falling all over because I am an investment. Like, I'm invested in myself. I am money. If something happens to me, I'm not going to get no money no more. I like, th- I have to protect myself. And I don't think, <laughs> I, and I think that's where the evil is. I think nobody... You're now just a dollar sign in people's eyes. Oh. Because you got to think about the things that come with that dollar sign now. You know, it. they say money, having money won't make you happy or it won't make you feel better and all these things. Yeah, that's fine. But what it will do is take away the stress of how I'm going to pay my rent, how I'm going to pay my car note, how I have to go to work every day, even if I don't feel good. It's going to take that stress away and free up some mental space in my head so that I can think about other things. And you know what else is going to afford me? The ability to get help for the mental stuff that I have. Bingo. The ability to have access to better food so I don't have to Bingo. eat on the four for four Bingo. or get the Big Mac. Y'all shame people for eating McDonald's. Bitch, that's all I could afford right now. I'm going to tear that McDonald's up. Keep up. But McDonald's ain't even cheap. Okay. McDonald's, okay. Like you, one like a Big Mac combo, like nine bucks. Twenty dollars, two people. You could fuck it up at McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you used to could fuck. Oh. Dollar menu, you make a shorty. Oh my mm. god, I used to go nuts. Big Mac sauce that going a, everything. That was a value menu. Yeah, now it's not the dollar menu anymore. Two for five for two items. Like <laughs> it's crazy. But, uh, so the, the thing is, I'm kind of I'm kind of gonna go on the opposite end on here. So I think it's the root of all evil until you got it, all right? Or you, or you, I guess until like you're in, in the pursuit of it, right? And or, or things are starting to work out. Because I feel like in some cases, like people need you to kind of be a millionaire in some cases, right? Or to be well off, right? Because yes, there are, there, there is noise for those people who are coming from outside of that. But I think for the most part, like if they weren't there ahead of time, you weren't really going to be dealing with them after the fact neither, right? But 
at the end of it all, it's like. Like how, like, what is your relationship with, with money? Basically, like, if you are gonna put yourself in, in a position where it's like, yo, like, I'm not, you know, like, I'm gonna protect myself. I'm gonna protect my investment, which might be yourself, right? Or you know, like, or you're gonna just put yourself out there, or you're gonna put the people around you to make sure that that stuff gets taken care of. I was thinking about this the other day. The meme came up, and uh, you found. <laughs> You found uh, $5 billion. <laughs> Who's the first person you call? Mm-hmm. And in my head, I like started doing what I would do with the money. And I think we did an episode like this. But like, right. we did. We I might, like. We might need to rehash, like, if, if any. Like, what's the answer? I, I want, after you say this, I want to hear what Rez's answer is. I started thinking what I would really do with the money. Like, and I learned that it would, like, it would be, to our earlier conversation, create the experience for the people around me. Of course, you buy a home and do cars and you set your immediate family up. But I was like, after that, I'd probably call E and say, E, we about to go get a building. We about to set all this shit up in this building. So you can do whatever you need to do for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going, we're, whatever you need for your business, we'd probably, we'd go, we go to buy it now. It don't matter. Let's go do it now for you. Uh, banks, we about to get all the production that we need, marketing, all that we need for you to live your dream. And I'm like, bro, I'll, for me, the money for me is to help everybody around me with it, bro. Right. You ain't never been to Galapagos. Now we can go to Galapagos. <laughs> now we can go to Galapagos. Now we can go to Galapagos. <laughs> like, let's live, let's make these experiences. Like, if I had a billion dollars, I wouldn't feel right if he didn't. Right. Or he didn't get close to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it wouldn't just be See, me. Oh, of course, don't get me, don't get me wrong. We're about to go buy out a section, and we're about to go nuts. (laughs) But also, we're about to do some fun shit with it, and but we also gonna do some business shit with it, right? See, believe it, believe it or not, I feel like for me, I would get (laughs) a little bit more conservative for how I spend my money. Like I I wouldn't, to me, like I wouldn't, like the the urge is to is to go to the binge. You know, everybody everybody knows to that, but it's like, (laughs) I guess, like I feel like. Like if who would I would I tell first, I would kind of hold it to myself for a couple of days, mm. just to kind of like understand what the hell's what the hell's going on, you know what I mean? And then kind of let Res know like maybe it wasn't five billion, but maybe it was like a billion. Nah, 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 <laughs> fuck that. We finna run through it because if it, if it wasn't mine, it ain't my fault. Yeah, I think I would do the same thing. I would sit on it for a couple of days and kind of hold it and be like. Then I would slowly start spending it just to make sure that it's there. And then I would tell. Man, fuck that. It would be a face-to-face conversation. Shorty now. found twelve. Shorty found $4,200 in a Goodwill coat. Turned it in. They gave her 1000 Guess what she said she was going to spend 1000 on? A birthday party for her daughter. Oh, that's sweet. Imagine what a forty-two thousand, a forty, a four hundred, a four thousand two hundred dollar party looks like versus a thousand dollar party. Right. <laughs> like, fam, if you have forty four thousand dollars to lose, you didn't need it. You left it in the coat. You weren't looking for it. <laughs> you didn't need it. That you was, weren't looking for it. That was drug money. I just think uh, that's funny. <laughs> we're all working towards it, but. Is it really a matter of luck or is it just you working and having a strategy toward, towards it? Because we all have the same. Well, I don't want to say the same. We all have the ability physically if you, to. If, I swear to God, if you say we all have the same 24 <laughs> hours, I'm going to get the fuck up out of it right now. <laughs> I am leaving. No, but you can. Uh, it all sounds bad. Okay. So. <laughs> If you really want it, no, we don't. Not if you really want. We don't. Okay. I don't have. I don't have the same twenty four hours as Jay Z. I can't call Guru and say, "Hey, make this sound good." For real, I need a beat today. That's not the same. That is not the same twenty four hours. That is a completely different twenty four hours for me. Yo, you're right. 
No, like it's it's right, and it is insensitive to say we're all given the same opportunity. You could, you too, could be a millionaire young black girl whose uh, mom is addicted to drugs, whose father is in jail, or uh, who doesn't have the same access to education and all the rest. Like, realistically, yeah, I don't know. Like, they, the, the, the way society set it up for you, it's not looking too good. It's not looking too good. And it plays back into, like, the opportunities that we're given as black people. And it's so much easier to say, oh, they're making excuses. But now nah, you got to listen to the shit that we're talking Bro, about. Bro, <laughs> We said Chappelle because that there's a skit based off Chappelle. There's a real commercial, the McDonald's commercial. Like, niggas were excited for Calvin. Mm-hmm. That Calvin worked at McDonald's. This is in the 90s. Calvin probably made like $4 an hour at McDonald's because that was better than him being on the street. Bro, the government got to give us what they what they owe us. I mean, I, I, I just hate to put it like I'm not looking – to Jay Z or Beyonce or Kanye West for a handout, I think at this point the government has to run me my one. Like, Some... where is my money, dog? <laughs> like, where is my money? If I'm going outside and I'm looking at these pavements and these buildings, somebody's grandmother made these, and it wasn't yours, okay? And is, these buildings are making people a lot of money. Is nobody <sighs> like tax day was last week? Well, you know, traditionally, yeah. In a regular world without COVID. Has anybody ever put in the thought of, there's a chance you might owe the government for something they didn't take? (laughs) Like, fam, I filled out the paper. It wasn't my job to calculate up and take out what you were supposed to get and give it to you. You did that. (laughs) Like, you did that. Fam, I don't work off the books. I have a regular nine to five. Or how about my family was torn apart because y'all wanted to pump crack into the black and brown communities. And my mother ain't been right since. And my dad had to raise children on the, how about that? How about for that? Like, what do we get for that? The same lady that was telling us to say no to her husband was bringing the drugs in. Uh huh. The, the same, like, let's talk about it. Like then said, Hey, you guys are making too much money off. What we asked y'all to do to begin with. Some of y'all gotta get out the streets. We about to lock y'all up. Some? So let's rip these. Was it some? Because it was it's millions. It's a <laughs> so lot of people in jail. Let's break these families apart by taking their fathers in these households and put them in jail. Then laugh at them for not having a father in the house. And then expect them to say, hey, maybe I should go to school and not drug deal. Or these OGs still got money <laughs> in the streets. Maybe I should go do the same thing. Right. My teacher, I'm going to school every day. My teacher is expecting me to be able to pay attention, but I ain't eat because my mom was out all night and my dad is in jail. My mom was working all night. My dad is in jail. My dad is here, but my mom ain't here and I'm just supposed to be able to focus. Yeah. So, I mean, when you talk about we all have the same opportunities, do we? Because we just started seeing those videos where you're talking about where we start versus where um, other cultures start that in the race. That and we Jesus said the teacher used to tell him to tear it off his beeper. Ma'am, I now drive a car. I could fuck you if I was <laughs> like, like, ma'am, I make more money than you in an hour. Right. Why would I do that? Right. It's just, I mean, so is it safe to say we're eliminating that we all don't have the same 24 hours? We all don't have the same access? I think when they use that, and which make which is funny, they mean it in terms of what you do with it. If you, I think work, it's, if you work hard in your 24 hours, we all have 24 hours to work hard. I think it's supposed to be a means of motivation, but how motivational is it? Nigga, no. Does Ima- it motivate you? Really? Imagine that I spend all day on my computer that's nine years old and doesn't run as fast. I did the work. Just it took me it took me nine hours to do the work versus you with your good computer that only took you two and a half. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um that that term uh I feel like people use that term because they use it for motivation, but I don't need it for motivation. <laughs> also, let's talk about that. Like I like <laughs> my thing is I am naturally hungry for this. Like like I want to succeed more than like anything else. Like I am never going back to corporate life mm-hmm. unless I'm par- unless we're bought out. It's the only way. Or what if, as a person, 
who's skeptical about life. I hear you. We all have the same 24 hours and go, you don't know what I deal with in my 24 hours. All right. You don't know the fears that I have. You don't understand what the stress of you need to be better to support the people around you, but you don't know where you need to start to be better. Mm -hmm. You don't understand that in your life, the fear you've had is every time I took the steps to go forward, I took three and I went back five. So now I'm complacent, stuck in a space where not only am I afraid, I also don't know if I'm going the right way. Mm -hmm. So our 24 hours are not the same, sir. Right. Then it keeps me up at night. Worrying about this. So when I get up to go to my 9 to 5, I'm tired at my 9 to 5. I got off at 5. I'm now too tired to work on my dream. And so now it's 3 o'clock in the morning again, and I'm repeating this nasty cycle. Yeah. But could I go get help? Yeah. but I mean, that is a, that's what they'll tell you. <laughs> go get help. Go talk to somebody. Go do these things. But what was your process um, when you did Go try to get help. Wasn't there a, a fee that came with it? Not only a fee. Uh, like, nigga, I don't have the money to go through different therapists. Right. To see which one I like. Yeah. And this is the cheap therapist. This ain't you take it out of my health insurance or I just pay part of it. This was me saying, I can't afford none of this. I'm going to pay out of pocket 50 bucks for a session to not like my therapist. Now I'm supposed to go do the work to find a new therapist to see if I like them. Which leads back to money (laughs) as a resource (laughs) and why having money is so important to everybody in a society and how these uh, typical statements or these cliche statements make it insensitive to what everybody else is going through. And I think... It's it's hard to say what would fix it because money would fix it. Honestly, throw money at it. But it just goes back into that point of the things that you have to do to get money. And I don't want this to be a kind of like bashing thing. I don't think anybody who's worked to get their money should feel bad because no, no. it's not your fault that we were set up in these circumstances as uh, black and brown people to work twice as hard or three times as hard and have to go through several types of different um, obstacles to get where we are. I say right now is a time where these um, people are, they feel bad. Like they, they have a lot of um, white guilt going on right now. They don't. um, A good amount do. And it's a time where every, every corporation is talk about diversity inclusion. Like it's almost to the point where you can't even turn around without hearing somebody say diversity or inclusion. So what it's time to do, if you're in the position to offer diversity or inclusion in the corporation that you're working from, cash out. Cash out on that white guilt. Cash out on them white dollars. There are white people out here who feel bad. I was on um, just a Zoom call, and it was a call to action telling people to do the research because a lot of times they'll come to us and they're like, Oh, well, well, like, what should we do? How do we fix this? How do we figure it out? Do your research. Figure out where your parents came from. Figure out whose life they fucked up, because I'm sure they did. And figure out how you can help those families individual. Because even in a town like Winston-Salem, if you look back on some of them white people, y'all, y'all cousins live down the street. Y'all cousins live down the street because your grandfather was a rapist. So let's just get to the bottom of it. It used to be a booming place for black owned business, black entrepreneurship. We can't even get a black ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's my call to action. Um, Just cashing out on that white goat. That's what we could do and continue to like push yourself. I know it's a fight every day just to get up. Trust me. I know. And it's not all going to get done in one day. Trust me. I know. But if you sit up there and you let society tell you and dictate what, 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 you'll drive yourself crazy. Because it's not realistic. If I listen to somebody telling me, oh, 25, 8, 13 days a week, bitch, you're tired. And your brain isn't 
calculate in the right way. You got to go to sleep. I had to tell Eric last week, go to sleep. You're not functioning the right way. You need rest. We are humans. We need rest. And in order to that, to get to that next level, you got to work, but you can't kill yourself. Like She's right. I was working myself down to the bone, but it's because things need to get done. They and do. Sometimes I just operate in a way that's just like, I will sleep when it gets done. Because if I don't, then it gets pushed back and I'm betting on me right now. Unfortunately, I don't have the the comfortability to be able to say, hey, someone else will be able to pick up the slack. Right. I mean. Just wanted to get that out there. She's just wild, bro. I just really had a place where it's like, even if it's social media, bro, like. Just people in general, just talking, like, just talking. Want you to want you to listen to what they got to say. And it's like, bro, this is not helping. Mm-hmm. Nothing is for motivational purposes. Mm-hmm. Who are you trying to motivate? Mm-hmm. Like, you can't tell me you got to do that. My life is nothing like yours. It may be better than yours. <laughs> I might have internal peace. You don't. It drives you crazy at night. Just because you got a lot of money that ain't. Don't make you better than me, bro. Like, it's just. I don't know, bro. I've been. This is a weird place for me now, bro. Because you start to realize your life. It's, it's not ending. But you don't know. Like, how much longer you got? And what you leave the show for is what people remember you for. Mm. I um, I was watching a live the other day, and shout out to um, America B Styles Me, but I was watching her live last week, and I think a lot of it, a, lot, a piece to it and a piece to like continuing to push on is the feeling of feeling stuck and how you move past that. Because in order to get to your next level of your life and what it sounds like you're describing is just like a feeling of uncertainty and a feeling of being stuck. And the piece that she left us with was that, you know, when you feel stuck, you have to do the thing that's bothering you. Like, Whatever you feel like is the reason why you feel stuck. Like, say, for instance, um, for me, it was something as small as, like, not having a bin of clothes unpacked. But this is just micro, like something small. I'm having a hard time coming home and getting comfortable because my house isn't in order. Why isn't my house in order? Because I haven't unpacked the bin of laundry. And this isn't this is just something small. But, like, I think it's real. And a lot of the. The things that are causing you stress and anxiety are typically something in the back of your mind, like an alarm. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. And the longer you avoid it, the longer it's going to be continue to be a pain in the back of your neck. So, I mean, that stuck with me. Um, I don't know if that sticks with anybody who's listening, but I think it's something to remember when you're going through those times because we all get stuck. So many different things to hear and do, but... Yeah. Gotta keep it pushing. What's we'll say on mine, Easy? No, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know, bro. It's like, you ever notice how, like, there's somebody who looks at you and think you might be one of the most amazing people they've ever seen? Yeah. Be like, but yeah, that's not how you feel. Like, I feel like, I feel like everything that I've accomplished in life so far came at a chance, right? And I took it, yet it didn't pay off. I'm still in a position where I can help nobody. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I've got the the luck we talked about more times than none, but yet, even with the hard work, nothing paid off. You can only go viral. You can go viral damn near every day if somebody cares. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Somebody cares you go viral every day. Getting somebody to watch a podcast you do. Preference. <laughs> you know, it's like preference if that's my hard work. You could make TikTok videos every single day. If one goes viral, tomorrow's video might not do it. But you're like, fam, I have a whole body of work that's just as good as the one you liked. It's just like, bro, how the fuck are you supposed to make? How are you supposed to break this curse? I mean, yes, (laughs) going viral is an option, but it's not. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that is your chance. That's a chance. Yeah. Yeah. It, It seems like. It's easy, but not we, even be not. I'm not, what I'm saying is that was your that was your. I got to play in front of yeah. you know. It. I I got to play in the NCAA tournament. They got to see what I could do. That was that was like to connect what he said earlier about the the starting the starting point guard. You know, yeah, like this me. was my turn. This is my, this is my this is my moment to to make to it shine. Happen. Boom! I'm shining. People are looking at me. Why the fuck they don't care about me? Right. <laughs> Still, like we may never in our life talk about Gorilla Glue Girl again. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. She's gonna no. She's gonna get talked about. Why? People are gonna bring up the uh, time somebody did it, but that's about it. But I mean, I'm pretty sure she's not just. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want it to, that to be <laughs> my defining moment. Mm-hmm. Like I'm pretty sure she does something else. Mm-hmm. Wasn't she like she does hair? Well, I mean, probably not good, but you know what I'm saying. Like there are opportunities here. There's a lot of talented people. Who are doing the work that don't get a light shined on them. And if you can hear this and you think you're one of them people, I'm sorry for you. Because I understand your plight. So for me, I I felt like I, w- I used to be there, right? And the only reason why I say I used to be there is because I, I changed my perspective, if that makes sense. Like, I used to want to chase the end goal. Right. And I would always I was always like, you know, you 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 set up a like you ever been to that situation where you're like, hey, like I want to do this. I want to accomplish this. And you get there. And now it's like, well, what's next? Does That make sense. So like for me, at least what helped me was like, yes, like you want to you might have like something that's like like material, like I want to make a million dollars or whatever. But to me, is the, I fell in love with the the pursuit of it all, right? I fell in love with the the actual doing of the work, and I, and I get it. Like I might be in a better place than others because for whatever you know, like number of different reasons. But like that is why I feel like I don't necessarily need mo- the motivation or something like that. Like or like I know, like yes, like the money would could be better. But I know that the money will come because I'm in the I'm doing the work that I believe will, that will get me there, and I am in love with that portion of the process, and not necessarily the the end result saying that I did this. Yeah, I also I don't think it's ever going to be a time where you you just get a chance to stop doing the work. I think it's something that's continuous, and I think we also have to get it out of our head that it's easier as some get rich quick scheme or you can just get a piece of luck or um, just get a a strike of lightning on you and it's going to happen like a lot like shit is hard like we all sat here and we talked about the struggles why we need it why we don't have access to it and the things you got to do to get there and the shit is hard I think what's important is finding the things to Kind of take your mind off of it and try not to sit in that. But, I mean, it's easier said than done. Um, The same way people tell you to get therapy. But also falling in love with... I mean, I think therapy does work in hindsight. It does work. Probably. Access to therapy, that's where it gets a little challenging. And finding that and putting the energy into it, like, you don't take into consideration the amount of times. You probably feel, like, for you, for instance, you probably feel like, 
I don't even want to go through that process again because I sat here and opened up to another person and now I got to go find another person, potentially pay the money and all these things. But I think um, we have to get it out of our head that this shit is easy because I don't think life was made to be easy. Could have been easy if whoever didn't make paying bills came up or whoever didn't (laughs) come up with the concept that we got to work to get food and shit like Damn, can I just go out there and eat? Like, why can't I just go to the grocery store and pick up the apple? But um, life is hard. Shit, bro. Let's go ahead and take a break and come back with our final thoughts. And we're back. So for our final thoughts, I want to touch on, uh, let's say we did get a lump sum of money. Uh, Somebody put their direct deposit in the wrong account. And now we're up on... Uh, five million, but they tell us we can keep five hundred thousand because we were an honest citizen and we gave them back their five so they, million. Uh, so they gave us a cash up, and we and we gave them. We gave them their money back a little bit, and they gave us some money back a little bit. Whatever. Let's say. Uh, story, story ain't realistic from the jail. Because <laughs> you ain't sending it back. <laughs> Who fault is that? You can't spare. I've been trying to tell you it's two E's, one Z, mm-hmm. not two Z's, one one E. Right. It's your fault. Now you didn't cash up the wrong person. Oh, so let's say you get this money to your account for whatever reason, and you know you still got debt. Who are you paying off first? In the words of Pooh Shiesty, come get it in blood. Oh, so you're not paying anybody back. If you wasn't getting your money on the 15th like you thought you was, you're definitely not going to get it now the exact same time. Oh, so you're not paying it. Paying it in monthly installments. <laughs> the exact same way I've been doing it. I think... Uh, I'm Cut it off. Here. Here's the extra 400 for your the installa- uh, reinstallation fee. Fuck it. Here. But yeah. you're going to get it the same way you was getting it when I ain't have it. I'm going to treat them the same way we treat people when we owe them money. Like, oh. Oh. Here's your, your measly... Two thousand dollars. So Here. let's be clear. Mm. The way you were hogging me, for, dogging me for your money, just because I got it, don't make you can get it. Right. And if you need it that bad, as a company, you better go get it like J.P. Morgan was and start selling drugs. That's right. <laughs> I agree. Get it up. Get it from the narcos. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I'm not paying you any lump sum. That is You're only you pay the be. interest. I'm not. I'm only playing principal. I'm not paying it all off at once. I'm, mm. You're gonna wait. Yeah, you're gonna wait. The same way I waited for this money, you're gonna wait for the money. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm. I'm not not paying off any bill specifically up front. Mm, nothing. <laughs> nothing. That Lambo might come fully paid when it when they put bring it to my driveway. Yeah, they bring the Lambo fully paid. That's the only thing that's gonna be paid out front. That's right. All right, what we got for our baby maker this week? You are now tuned in. You are now tuned now in. Tuned now in. tuned in to WMEZ. Uh, last week I played somebody who was known, a little known. This week I'm going to play somebody that's a little known too, just just to get the vibes up. This week we have uh, Galant just put out a great project. I'm in love with this project. It's a very good project, and this song this week by Gallant is called Julie. So this week on WMEZ, we got Gallant Julie here on WMEZ. Textually active. All right. Yeah, this episode, it was heavy. It, it really got you. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> poverty is a little bit... Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot closer than what we all think. I think once we put the monetary value in it, I mean, uh, living, 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 living a little broke over here. Uh, the episode made me feel broke, but uh, I'm rich in other things: uh, family, health, love, and wellness. And I think that's the things we have to focus on. Um, do you have a meme for the week, Meezy? Oh uh, yeah, let's just leave on a high note. Anxiety will have you thinking you're behind. Meanwhile, in re- reality, you're on top of everything. Try to remember that you're in control and everything works out in the end. It'll help. That's true. That's good. That's good. Uh, for me, uh, it's not necessarily a meme. It's just what's been kind of on my mind the last week or so. And believe your vibe checks, yo. Like, when you... When your gut is telling you like something is kind of off, it might be real. But 
be open to the idea that you could be bugging. Facts. And I don't know. A lot lately, like the vibes have been. I've been. I've been getting strong vibe checks from people. Like, all right, like or different scenarios. I guess it's a little different when you. I mean, just the way that how we've been moving lately. I'm just like you know trying to make sure that we're doing right by people. You know. Okay. And don't don't treat people with kitty gloves. If something is off, then say something. Facts. Um, I think mine is um, mine is very simple and kind of off topic. But um, if your sibling gives you a compliment, you know you looking nice for real. They always be the first one be trying to humble you because they don't like you that much. They be trying to humble you a little bit. Sound so, like jealousy to me. <laughs> they tell you you look nice. Uh, mo- most times they trying to um, they trying to butter you up to get some of that cash that you might have coming in. But uh, thank you all for listening to another se- episode of Textually Active. Textually Active. This podcast every Tuesday. Uh, we drop at six a.m. And while you're here, make sure you like, leave a comment, subscribe, and we'll be back next Tuesday. Bye. Hold it down. Keep working. Good times here. So, Thank you for listening to the Textually Active Podcast. This podcast is a full-service production from the Open Media Lab. Be sure to check in every Textual Tuesday along with following them on all social media at Textually Active Pod. Textually Active is a part of the Open Media Network.